Hello everybody. Uh, hey, welcome to this next video on the DCS SAM detection recognition innovation series I'm putting together here. And this one is on man pads, also known as man portable air defense systems. Uh, I had a lot of comments or I had a comment in one of my uh, last videos requesting I do one on man pads. So here you go. And um, I'm actually finding that man pads are one of the hardest SAM systems to defeat. Why is because you don't have a lot of support in the jets. It really comes to your comes down to your eyeballs and visually acquiring them. Okay, so let's jump into this uh, these slides before we get into the demonstration. So yeah, so man pads uh, use something called um, passive homing uh, using that infrared signature. Uh, consider them a short range SAM system. Uh, they operate at low altitude, meaning they're going to take you out of, when you're operating down at low altitude. And usually um, these um, uh, these systems are operated by one or two person team. And DCS, I only found three uh, man pads in the, in the game, which include the SA-18, uh, the SA-24. Both of those are uh, Russian. And, of course, the American-made Stinger. So let's jump in a little bit for each of those. And I'm going to put all, do all these together. Uh, first of all, we have the S-18 uh, Grouse, which is the NATO designation, and then the Russian name is the 9K-39 Igla. Uh, it does have a range between 1,600 and 17,000 feet. Uh, the altitude can reach up to 11,500 feet, and then, of course, the speed can get um, up to 1.1 Mach. And the missile it fires is the 9M-39. All right, very similar to the uh, SA-18, we have the SA-24, just like the Christmas Grinch. Uh, that is our NATO designation, whereas the Russian name is the 9K338 IGLA-S, which stands for, I think, Super. So it's IGLA Super. Um, and its range is between 1,600 and 17,000 feet with a maximum altitude of 11,500 feet and can reach up to 1.18 Mach. So it's a little bit faster than the SA-18 or just the standard IGLA. Uh, and the missile, I am guessing, is the 9M338, um, based upon the naming uh, convention uh, by the Russians there. Now, for the American-made Stinger, uh, of course, the NATO name is Stinger. I'm guessing the Russians call it <laughs> the Stinger, too. Uh, so, yeah, so we'll keep that there. Uh, its range is much more, up to 26,000 feet and a altitude up to 12,400 feet and um, can reach a speed of 2.2 Mach. Uh, it does fire the FIM-92C uh, missile. So let's get into those radar warning receiver signatures for our jets that we go through. And hopefully some red flags are going off for you now because first of all, we have our F-15E. Oh, no, sorry. No RWR signature for the man pad. Same thing for our F-16 and our F-18. Nope, no RWR signature for any infrared passive system on our RWR. However, the A-10 does have some limited capability uh, through its missile warning system. So let's talk about that a little bit here. Uh, first of all, we have multiple systems to help with this uh, missile warning system, including our uh, countermeasure signal processor. Let me turn on my little pen here for you. Sorry, a little hit. But yeah, we have our countermeasure signal processor panel. That's our bottom right um, next to, in the cockpit. And then um, up front, we have our uh, countermeasure set control panel here, and uh, the MWS here will say active for you. And then, of course, if we do have a missile launch, we will get, if these are activated, we will get that M uh, in our RWR uh, indicating we have a missile launch. So just know that um, this M or the signature is going to be short-lived. It is related to the uh, missile boost phase. So it's when it's um, firing off that it's going to be detected. So as soon as it's run out of its propellant, uh, we're not going to get any more uh, detection in our RWR. And also, um, we cannot differentiate between a good and a bad missile, meaning a good guy or a bad guy missile. So, uh, so if anything gets launches, it's going to get detected. So if you have a wingman firing off a Maverick, it's going to uh, identify it as well. Okay, so 
So how do we evade a man pad? Um, first and foremost, if you're in a fast mover um, without that missile warning system that the A-10 has, um, keep your altitude above 15,000 feet if you are in areas where there are known man pads. Uh, that is your best defense. Keep it up high and operate above 15,000 feet, above ground level. Not not mean, self, mean sea level, but above ground level. So if you're operating in something around four to 5,000 feet in elevation and on the ground, uh, you want to be up between 19 and 20,000 feet up in the air. Um, your best defense is also to visually acquire that SAM launch as soon as possible. That means your head needs to be up in the canopy looking through the windows. And I, I have a fault of looking down at my systems and my TGP and trying to find targets and not observing anything that's being fired on me. So if you're down low, you want to keep your head up and looking out the window continuously. Uh, the three options you have are to do something called a high-speed break on beam. Uh, you can do something called an out-of-plane break turn. I'm going to demonstrate these two here. And uh, um, and then lastly is this orthogonal roll over the missile. And uh, anytime you're performing any of these, you absolutely want to be pumping flares. Uh, so if you see a missile launch, start pumping flares as many as possible. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into A-10. Uh, we're going to be on uh, the Marianas uh, map. A little bit different scenery and uh, taking on a SA-24. All right, so let's uh, stop here and let's jump into A-10 for a little demonstration. All right, see you in a sec. All right, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to the game. Sitting here at A-10, uh, moving up to Waypoint 2 here, which we have an SA-24, um, the Grinch uh, man pad located, uh, so the IGLA uh, S system. And as you can see, I'll turn on my helmet display. He's located right there on the runway. I'm gonna turn that off so you can see the missile launch. And uh, tell the truth, uh, I've been doing a lot of takes on trying to defeat this system. Very difficult. And I have the benefit of knowing exactly where he's located. <laughs> uh, but uh, the thing I, I'm having most success at is doing the orthogonic roll. Uh, he's letting us get a little bit too close. Oh, I'm in, I'm in prime man pad position here for a missile launch. Yeah, he's right there next to that truck. You can see there on the runway. In this position, I really only have one option is to start jumping flares, and he is not launching on me. All right, friend, why are you not engaging me? It's right there next to that little X. Here we go, missile launch. There we go. So I did a pretty good there orthogonic roll there. I'm gonna keep pumping flares to try to extend away Hold from up. here and get Hold some up. get away from him as much as I can. Oh he's gonna launch on us again. Hold yep, up. he's launching. Hold up. Woo! <laughs> so I was just pumping flares right there. Altitude, altitude. Woo. So that was a pretty good example of that orthogonic or orthogonal roll. Uh, so I tried to put that missile in the canopy and roll over the top of it. 
Oh, I'm going to extend out here a little bit. Just keeping it low. Keeping that mountain between he and I. And we're four miles out, so we can probably go ahead and get some altitude now. I am finding that maneuver is the easiest one of them all. Uh, the beam one, I'm not having much success. Although you might consider that last thing I just did. Just pumping flares. <laughs> Extending out. How are we doing the flares? 138. I'm also noticing a little flash of light right before I see that smoke trail. Um, you may not be able to see that on YouTube uh, because of the quality of the video, but um, I'm recording and playing at 1440p. But I do see a little flash when I think I see that missile launch. Uh, it's before the smoke trail. But again, I know exactly where he's located. I was looking right at that area. All right, we're going to move in a little bit closer. Let's get some more altitude this time. Let's try to do that uh, out of plane brake turn. Of course, we are decreasing speed by get, getting some more altitude here. So this area. In this area right here. Oh, this makes me nervous. Missile launch. I ended up doing another orthogonic roll. Pull up, pull up. But that worked out pretty well. Still pumping flares. I also kicked off the engine there. I don't know if you noticed. I don't know if that helps or not by reducing your IR signature. Uh, but it worked. Here we go, another missile launch. Altitude, altitude. <laughs> pull up, pull up. <laughs> oh, that's cool. All right, well, that was a pretty good hard break turn there against that missile launch. So I'm going to call it good. That was a pretty successful uh, demonstration of defeating a Mad Pad. Of course, I had a lot of benefit of knowing exactly where he was located uh, in real life or the real game you're probably not going to know where they're located. So just assume if you're down low, keep your eyes out for those guys and try to and hope you can detect those missile launches. And if you're A-10, you're going to have that missile warning system to help you out. So, all right, well, let's jump off here. And again, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you guys learned something. And I'm definitely learning how to defeat those mad bats. Uh, you saw the successful ones, not the other 15 I did where I got shot down. <laughs> all right, you guys take care, and I'll see you next time. All right, bye-bye.